everybody. It is game day. Alyssa Orange here, Mike Irwin. Let's get you ready for some basketball hoops, right. shall we, Mike? Hey, there you are. Uh, you know, it's been a few days since we've seen this Arkansas team in action. Just quickly, what are you looking for in this Ole Miss game? Well, they made a lot of mistakes in that LSU game. Mainly their defense was as bad as it's been. Now, LSU had a lot to do with that. They pretty much one-on-one to Arkansas. They've got a lot of talent, a lot of guys that are quick. I don't expect that to happen today, but I do expect Arkansas to play better defense mm -hmm. than they did. You have to hope that the top three guys all, all are scoring. We've seen games where Mason kind of disappears, and then Jimmy Witt doesn't score a lot, or, or Isaiah Joe doesn't. They need all of those guys to score. And, of course, they've got this problem inside now where, where I guess Reggie Chaney is in the doghouse. We don't know what's going to happen to him, whether he's going to play or he's not going to play. A lot of the stuff that Musselman said after practice uh, might have been just a thing to motivate him. I'm looking for another guy. Sure. Well, who's that guy, you know? Um, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, this, is a, this, this is not the toughest road trip they'll have by mm -hmm. far. But it's not one you can overlook either. Yeah, you talked about what Musselman said in his press conference on Wednesday, or excuse me, on Thursday. Here's a snippet of what Coach Musselman is looking for in this game. Trying to figure out who's going to play behind Adriel. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And, and who's going to produce and, and, and provide us something. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to find. Uh, Silla has sat there patiently. Maybe he's a guy. Maybe it's another guard. Once again, uh, we played a basketball against uh, against a very, very athletic team. And who rebounded the best? You go back and watch. Our five guards rebounded the best. You know, we need, we need, you know, we need somebody else to make some three balls uh, besides, you know, Mason and, and, uh, and Isaiah. We really do. I mean, that's, 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 a, you know, we got to make like, you know, on the road, I think the magic number's got to be like 12, like, Eight's not going to do it because of our lack of rebounding. And so somebody's, you know, I mean, in reality, you know, one of our best three-point shooters right now is Adriel Bailey. And, you know, he doesn't take many of them. Joe and Mason Jones aren't hot behind the three. got to have somebody else. I was impressed, Mike, with what I saw from Desi Sills against LSU, a guy who can be hot or cold, but he was on a little bit in that LSU game. Could Desi Sills be a guy that could be that third guard that can shoot threes? Well, he, he's on and off with his three-point shooting. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's not there. There's so many factors in this game. One thing you, you always worry about with Arkansas is rebounding because they're dead last in the SEC in rebounding, and they really got murdered at LSU. I mean, I'm not, not sure I've ever seen a game where, no, where a team got no second-chance points mm -hmm. and gave up so many second-chance points. So you might be worried about that in this regard because Ole Miss has a 6'10 a center, then they've got a 6'11 backup, and then a 6'9 guy too. So that's a big lineup. But only two of those, one of those guys really scores many points. Mm -hmm. The other two are mainly in there just to play defense and rebound a little bit. Their starter is the guy you have to worry about. And look, here, in spite of all that size, Ole Miss is, I think they're 11th in rebounding. So it's not that, there's not that big a difference. I think there's one and a half boards a game difference between the two teams. So I don't expect this to be a game where Arkansas has a lot of trouble rebounding. Usually a game like this comes down to, how well the home team is fired up by the crowd, if there are things that happen in the game that kind of get them pumped up and gets the crowd pumped up, it makes it harder on the road team. The best way you can deal with this is to come out, get a lead, and kind of hold it and keep the crowd out of the game. But every, every one of these uh, SEC road trips uh, kind of takes on a life of its own. You're, you're just not really sure. It doesn't matter who you're talking about. Even Auburn's going to lose a road game or two this year, I think. So... Uh, you just don't really know. This is this is what I call a winnable SEC road game, and it's real important to win it because you don't have a lot of them where on paper you look like you got a good chance of winning it. We talk about the players. Every team has one for Ole Miss. His name is Brian Tyree. Uh, here is Coach Musselman on what Ole Miss brings to the table. I mean, he can score. He can dribble. He can pass. He's a great player. They have a great coach who puts him in great, you know, spots to score the ball. Their team understands that he's the man. Um, both guards. I mean, it's as good as backcourt as there is in the in the conference for sure. And uh, they're both really competent and they're experienced.
Very impressive um, against Texas A&M, and it'll be really interesting to see again. Kermit Davis was the SE or. Uh, yeah, Kermit Davis was the SEC Coach of the Year last year. People sometimes forget that because Ole Miss is only, I think, 9-5 and five on the season. We've got boots on the ground in Oxford. We sit Drew Wham and, and Jason Carroll. Out of this wintry weather, I think there might be, like, tornado weather in Ole Miss. So I don't think we're trading one for the other. But here is our Drew Ammon with our insider, Kevin McPherson, on their thoughts on today's matchup. Hey, what's up here from the Pavilion at Ole Miss here with Kevin McPherson, our Hog Hoops insider, hogville.net. And, Kevin, let's talk about the fact, obviously, last season here, Ole Miss better than Arkansas, 84-67. Different season, different dynamics. Arkansas can really defend the three. We know that, about a 23% clip. Yeah, and you, if you go back to last season, Ole Miss started everything out high, playing guard and big man, rolling their bigs. The... Arkansas is a different defensive scheme now. I don't know that Ole Miss is going to have that game plan. And the last time these teams played, it was a one-point Arkansas win in Fayetteville as they played twice last year. So it'll be interesting to see with a new system that Arkansas has in place how it's going to play out in terms of strategy in this game. My man Kevin is just like literally just out of the car, that is. He, he basically took the trip up here to Oxford uh, today here, the three-hour trip, roughly, right? About three hours, something uh, like that? Give or take. There you go, there you go. Good journey for you. Let's talk about the guards for Ole Miss. Devontae Schuler, really good. Preseason, all-SEC second team performer. You look at the fact that Brian Tyree, preseason, all-SEC first team. These two guys you really got to look out for. Really, it starts with the backcourt for Ole Miss. That's right, and your back-to-back -back road games, Arkansas, was challenged in the last game by bigger guards that tried to drive the ball and use some – their size and physicality. This is a different kind of backcourt that's probably just as good, but in different ways. Quickness, a lot of ball skill with some counter moves and getting in the mid range. This is going to be a test for Arkansas's backcourt again. One of the best perimeter defenses, just mentioned, number one in the country at three point field goal defense. But let's see where, with no true rim protector, especially when Bailey's out, if those guards get penetration, they get the ball up on the glass, make or miss. Arkansas's got to rebound the ball today. Okay, good segue. You just mentioned Adrian Bailey because they got to spell him at the five. You know, when you look at it, where is it going to help? Uh, in terms of the uh, the bench production for Arkansas, will it be help from Gene Talsilla? Will it be help from a guy like Ethan Henderson? Who knows? You know, and obviously when you look at it, this is just a deal where, you know, Reggie Cheney against LSU had four fouls alone in the first half. So somebody's got to give Bailey some rest. Right, and Cheney's been the guy in that top seven rotation. He's been inconsistent. He's had his moments. He played well off the bench against Indiana the last two games, especially the last game. He really struggled. Eric Musman was none too pleased with the technical foul after a common foul, basically mm -hmm. put him on the bench. He didn't play in the second half. Arkansas has played a lot of five-guard lineup, too, in the last two games. So look for more of that, and we'll see if either Ethan Henderson or John Tilsilla get their chance. And when you look at this Arkansas team, this is a team with just two losses on the season. Very well could be undefeated. That's really a big part of the theme here going into this game against Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a team that, under Kermit Davis, did a great job overachieving last season. I know they started the preseason last in the SEC last season, made it all the way to the NCAA tournament. Kermit's a really good coach, so you know, in this environment, tall task for Arkansas, despite the fact Arkansas is so sound fundamentally. Yeah, and this team's been up and down Ole Miss. They had a three-game losing streak, then a four-game winning streak. Back-to-back -back losses both on the road, though. This team's 7-1 at home. The only team to come in here and beat them is Sixth ranked Butler. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're gonna they're always tough in here, here and Arkansas always struggles playing here in, in Oxford. Uh, but I, this Arkansas team defense travels, so I think they're going to be in the game with a chance mm -hmm. to win in the end. Yeah, and when you look at the production offensively, Ole Miss just did not have it against Texas A&M. 57-47 loss there at Reed Arena, and that second half was not good at all for Kermit Davis's team. Kevin, thanks very much. We're having here reporting as well from Oxford. We'll send it back to you. Guys, we appreciate that insight, Mike. They mentioned Ethan Henderson, Gene Tosilla, and a possibility that some people have been throwing out there. Do you even just put uh, Jamario Bell in there? He's a big body who can go up and rebound. I don't think you do it on the road. You might do it at home first. I think they're waiting a little later in the season to see. They want to see more out of him in practice. And honestly, I could be wrong, but I think Cheney will play. He's still their best option. You just talk to him. You just tell him. You don't lose your cool like that. You need to play better. But if if not, I'd rather go, in, especially in this game, with an all-guard lineup because, again, as big as this team is inside, they don't rebound all that well. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of, look, there's a lot of things you could look at statistically. Arkansas shoots better than these guys. They score more points. They give up fewer points per game. It all looks good. It's just you have to fit, uh, factor in the road thing. And this is a an arena that was built pretty well. It's not huge, but it's kind of square, and it goes straight up, and the sound comes down on top of you, and it's a tough place to play. Their fans get in there and start going nuts. I think they're so happy they don't 
in that horrible tad pad anymore. <laughs> they're, they're determined to take advantage of it. But it's a tough place to play. What, the pavilion? I think, what, three, four years old now, maybe? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a nice arena. Yeah. It's a 10, 11,000. I don't know what it is, but it's nice. It was it was built with basketball in mind, and again, it it's very loud in there. All right, well, let's get you ready for this game. Just about, you know, 38 minutes away from tip-off on the SEC Network. Arkansas 12-2 and two on the year. Ole Miss looking for a SEC win. Again, 5 o'clock on the SEC Network at the Pavilion. That is going to do it for our pre-game analysis for Mike Irwin, for Drew Ammon on the road, and our Kevin McPherson. I'm Alyssa Orange. We'll see you tonight at 9 and 10.